Hey, it's October 31st, and, uh, and I won't be using that term that starts with an H, but we'll talk about our fall festival in October 31st. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word and, and for the power of your Holy Spirit among us. We pray your anointing on our time in your word today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. What can we do about the demons that are strangling America? Can we break the spell? Divisive demons have brought us to the brink of civil war. Demons of evil and hate have destroy, are destroying or at least working hard to destroy the family and the church. Spirits of lust have spread perversion that have contaminated every aspect of our culture. Demons have unleashed addiction and violence and mental illness. Can we stop them? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Uh, it is our sworn duty to tear down strongholds. Would you say that with me? It is our sworn duty to tear down. Let's say that together, shall we? It is our sworn duty to tear down strongholds. And then let's read together 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. Ready together. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Friends, these verses tell us there's a lot we can and should be doing. And we're going to talk about that quickly this morning. The Holy Spirit has given us weapons. Powerful, powerful weapons, ladies and gentlemen. And He's urging us to use those weapons. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1, the Word of God says, Then He called His twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Friends, we have been given that authority. The Holy Spirit, by mandate from the High King of Heaven, has given us that authority over all the devils. We are supposed to throw them out. Amen? What? Amen. Are you with me? Are you still checking Facebook or are you with me? <laughs> we are supposed to throw out the demons. We, are, we have been given authority over them. And God wants us to use it. In case you think that authority was just for the, the 12 first disciples, uh, look with me at Mark chapter 16, verse 17, that says, And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Praise the Lord. Friends, uh, this, this message here for us is that, that every one of us has been granted the authority and the power and the anointing to take authority over all the strongholds of the enemy. We've been called to do that, ladies and gentlemen, and God has given us the equipment and the tools and the anointing to do it. Tear down strongholds. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. In fact, uh, let me give you a little glimpse into uh, how demons react when, when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords shows up. Matthew chapter 8, verses 28 and 29, when he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gerizines, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? Friends, as soon as the foot of Jesus steps out of that boat and touches that land, it's almost as if the reverberations of the presence of the, of the Lord of Lords and King of Kings reaches all the way up to the tombs and, and begins to deal with and, and the fear and trembling of the demons as they recognize Son of God. 
is in their presence, you guys. And Jesus has called you and I to bring that same kind of terror into the hearts and lives of the demonic powers around this city. God is calling you and I on October 31st and every other day, every moment of every other day, to take authority over all the power of the enemy, over all disease as well. In Jesus' name, and He's calling you and I to do that. Second thing I want to talk to you about really quickly is that Satan has been deceiving us into being passive. One of the ways he tries to trick us is getting us to think things like this. Well, it's all up to God. It's all in God's hands. Sue, if you don't mind, please. I'm glad Sue didn't think that when she was standing next to that to her father-in-law who was on his deathbed moments away from passing into the bride. I'm glad she didn't say, well, it's all up to God. Yeah. No, she stepped right up and led him in the sinner's prayer. Amen. Friends, and the devil has lied to us and told us, oh, just, you know, just, just be passive. Just be, you know, just go ahead and be milk toast. You know? Just, just go ahead and, and uh, let it go. And let, let the demons rage. No, ladies and gentlemen, we've been called to take authority over them. God has given us that power. It is, we are to be active. A lot of it is in our hands. And it's important for us to step up in those moments and take authority in the name of Jesus. In fact, you know what? Uh, that's why we do what we do on October 31st. That's why we have a, a kid's fun time. And we get to present the gospel to hundreds of people. And, and a lot of people are going to come by and enjoy and be a part and, and we are not being passive. We are being active on this day. Amen. And it's important that we do that. Amen. The, the Bible in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 holds the key to revival. And it starts out like this. If my people who are called by my name. <laughs> Friends, we got a lot to do. And, and we can't let the enemy try to deceive us into being passive. We can't be paralyzed. We can't uh, handcuff ourselves to the couch. We've got to get up and get going and do what the Lord wants us to do. In fact, let me, look at, let me have you look at it with me from another angle. We can't just always talk about peace and wealth and success and living a good life. You know why? Because we're in the middle of a war. Yeah. We are in a war. Every now and then, uh, I hear somebody reflect back to uh, the war effort, World War II, uh, specifically where, you know, uh, there, everything was managed and, and saved and used and given so that our soldiers would have everything they needed, ladies and gentlemen. And you and I uh, need to have that same kind of application in this spiritual war that we're in. For this time, for this city, for the kingdom of God. And to give ourselves and to do everything we can do. Because God has called us to take our city back. God is calling us to take our city back. And you can't do that sitting on your hands and being passive. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Point number three, be careful and do not listen to the pillow prophets. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't be deceived uh, or distracted by those who are just going to give you some ear tickling, uh, warm, fuzzy kind of message because we're at war, ladies and gentlemen. There are some interesting uh, paradoxes during this time. I want to list some of them for you quickly. Those who teach that the end times are days of desperate evil and starvation are right. Those who predict a time of vast prosperity and breakthrough for the righteous are also right. See it? See the paradox? The second one is, it's correct to say that natural disasters 
of which we're experiencing even now await us. But it's also correct to say that these will be times of refreshing and favor and protection. It is true to say that we will go through some things. It is equally true to say that we will be protected from and escape other things. Yeah. It is accurate to believe that people will be more perverted than ever. And on the other hand, that the glory of God will rise on the church as never before. These are, these are not contradictions, ladies and gentlemen. They are prophetic paradoxes. This two opposite ends of the spectrum that are happening at the very same time in God's end time plan. The beautiful and the perverse happening at the same time. So, ladies and gentlemen, we need to look at this as a huge opportunity to share the gospel and to tell other people about Jesus. Our enemy tries to use these times to make us passive. But we have to do what our commander-in-chief is calling us to do. 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Go ahead and put that up if you will. 2 Timothy 2, 3, Endure hardness as a good soldier. James 4, 7, Resist the devil. And he'll run away like a little girl screaming. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Amen. No, it doesn't say that, but kind of. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Friends, we are called to action. We must be people of prayer and people of faith, and we've got to be doing what the Lord's called us to do. I'm thankful we have the testimony of, of, of one like young David, who saw the stalemate of what was happening no one on the side of Israel was challenging that giant enemy of God named Goliath. And David couldn't stand it any longer. We need, we need some more of those in today's battle. Amen? Don't be distracted. Just pray. We need some more of those in today's battle, ladies and gentlemen. We need some more Davids who offer themselves to God we need a lot of people like David who can't stand the evil any longer. Who can't stomach the perversion any longer. And with holy, godly, righteous anger are, are unable to see God dishonored any longer. And he's calling you and I, friends, to turn the tide in America and in the city of Portland, Oregon. Will you be one of those? Let me try that one more time. Are you with me? I know you're thinking fried chicken and gravy. I know, I know potluck Sundays are really tough to get people to stay focused on the Word of God. But ladies and gentlemen, God is looking for people who will turn the tide in America and in the city of Portland, Oregon. Will you be one of those? All right. God is calling us. God is anointing us. God is, has given us the weapons to use. We are not running out into this war unprepared or, or without any weapons. God has given us the mightiest of them. In fact, point number five, the authority we have over the devil was given to us by three very important things. And we don't want to we don't want to ignore them. We don't want to abuse them. We don't want to act like they're not there. The first one is the total victory of the cross. Emphasis on total and victory. Jesus has already won the war. We're just doing the mop-up part of it. The second thing that we were given, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of the precious blood of Jesus. And I hope you're praying the blood of Jesus over your kids and over your neighborhood and over your family and over this city. We need to be pleading the blood of Jesus. And then the third most powerful weapon that we have been given is our testimony. The word of our testimony. Revelation 12, 11 says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I have got to be like that. 
That is the calling that is on our lives to overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, by the power of the victory of the cross. Amen. Amen. See, friends, the other, the other picture that you and I need to get is that, from, that on the cross, Jesus kicked the teeth out of the devil. Hallelujah. He is a, he is a stingerless bee. He, he is a, an old ugly dragon, but he can't breathe any fire anymore. Hallelujah. Because Jesus took care of all of that on the cross. Colossians 2.15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil tries to come at you and, and make you feel like you're on the losing team. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we are on the winning team. We're, we're on God's team. We're on the, the side of Jesus. And he always wins. And he is winning right now, even as we even think about it. And he's called us to great victory. Great victory. When God sees someone taking up the mighty weapons of God in the name of Jesus and attempt the impossible, God will gather all the resources of heaven and bring that someone to total victory. Friends, that's the end of the story in your life. That's the end of the story in your testimony. You may have been bloodied and beat up all week, and you're here today to be healed up by the Holy Spirit and given a little sweet little kick in the pants to go out and be back on the front lines again. Praise the Lord. As a, as a brand new little freshman in Bible college a few years back, at the ripe old age of 18, uh, I asked one of our professors... Uh, is it okay to go on vacation? It was a serious question in my mind. Because, well, for, for lots of reasons. But, and that, that professor answered so wisely. She said to me, John, the, the Jewish people are historically uh, famous for having some of the longest vacations. And so, it's okay to go on vacation, ladies and gentlemen, but don't stay there. We're not, we're not called to be on vacation. We can, we can take breaks. We, we need to take breaks. Amen? Can I get a witness? We all need to have a, a rest or a break from time to time, but don't stay there. It, that can be really tempting to stay on vacation, but it, but it's, it takes all of us being back on the battlefield as soon as possible. And working together and, and seeing God do great and mighty things to us. So lastly this morning, let's break the spell of demons over America. You can, you can make a long list of them. And I, I don't have a list to give to you, but, but I have a list of things that I want to encourage you to do to break the spell of demons and the, the demonic stranglehold on our city and in our country. So let's live lives of purity and do what Jesus would do. Amen? Amen. Let's know the Word of God and use it in the fight. Amen? Amen? When people say, you're judging me, say, no, 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 no. no. This, is, this is the Holy Spirit. This is God trying to talk to you. Are you with me? Let's use the weapons we've been given, the cross, the blood, and the word of our testimony. Let's stand against the devil and the evil of our days, armed with God's truth and speaking the truth in love. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, so if you can't speak it in love, shut up! <laughs> and, I, and I say that lovingly. Amen? God, God doesn't want you and I to go out there and, and beat people up or, or browbeat. He wants us to be out there as much as possible sharing the gospel and spreading the good news, but most of all spreading His love because that's the big problem out there. Most people who are running from God and pumping their veins full of this and doing this and that, 
don't know how much God loves them. That's the whole, that's the big problem, ladies and gentlemen. They don't know how much God loves them. And God is calling you and I. In fact, great conversation opener is to say, is to ask somebody, do you know how much God loves you? And then let the Holy Spirit guide you through uh, telling them how much God loves them. Let's tear down strong ones. Everything that the Bible says, everything that raises itself up against the knowledge of God, everything that comes against the Word of God must be torn down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In our homes, in our schools, in our businesses, in our neighborhoods, everything that comes against the knowledge of God must be torn down. Let's surrender our lives to the Holy Spirit. And let's walk in that daily relationship with Him and experience the signs, wonders, and miracles that the Holy Spirit wants to work in through our lives. Amen.